Well, now it's time for the Mac to take a gigantic leap forward. It's been two years already since Apple released the very first Mac with an M1 processor. As expected, the transition to ARM was seamless thanks to Apple's extensive experience in this area. They've done this way too many times before. They've switched from 68,000 CPUs to PowerPC, Intel, and now ARM. In terms of uh, CPU performance, the M1 chip is very competitive. However, the GPU side of things is still lacking. For long-time Apple users, that's not a surprise. Apple has the tendency of delivering products that could use a little bit more oomph in that department. In this case, though, there was hope that they would manage to finally compete or even get ahead of the competition. Don't get me wrong, the machines are certainly capable, but if you're working with 3D, there are better options available on the PC side. Although I'm not looking to switch to a PC anytime soon, I'm interested in seeing the level of performance I can expect from a new Mac. And thankfully, a few weeks ago, I had the chance to test two different Mac Studio setups. Let's talk about it. The tests I ran were focused on 3D related tasks, specifically GPU rendering and photogrammetry. There's no reason to repeat video editing tests or other similar tasks, there's a ton of videos about that already. Redshift was used for the rendering part and PhotoCatch for the photogrammetry part of the test. PhotoCatch utilizes Apple's photogrammetry SDK, so things should be as optimized as possible. As for the hardware used, I tested both the low-end M1 Max and the high-end fully specced out M1 Ultra. When it comes to rendering, things seem to scale up well. I'm being vague here because I got some conflicting results. In the first run, which was a couple of weeks ago, the M1 Ultra was almost twice as fast as the M1 Pro. But yesterday, when we ran the test again to make some adjustments, the results were out of whack. The M1 Max was faster than the M1 Ultra. I'm sure it's a software issue, but yeah, for now we'll have to extrapolate M1 Ultra's performance. As for photogrammetry, the results were equally unexpected. But at least in this case, the results were weird from the very beginning. Before we go into details, I would say, if you have a very old Intel Mac, there's no reason not to upgrade to an M1 Ultra Mac Studio. Both systems are very capable and they managed to beat my iMac Pro. My current setup uses a 10-core 3GHz CPU and a Vega64 GPU with 16GB of memory. Let's start with GPU rendering. The test was a 2K still from this cartoony forest scene. It uses a lot of redshift features, GI of course, depth of field, and subsurface scattering, which was key in getting the nice shading in the leaves of the trees. I kept Redshift's default sampling threshold of 0.01, which is definitely an overkill for this scene. But I wanted to keep the render going for as long as possible. In normal circumstances, I would have used a value of 0.1. I did adjust though the bucket size. It turns out that this simple change can speed up your renders 2x or more. I found that out as I was going through the test with Sean Astrom. Sean is an amazing C4D artist and he has this killer setup with two 4090s. As he was benchmarking the scene, he showed me how big of an impact the bucket size has on rendering. I definitely did not expect this massive difference, but it's true. Once I changed the bucket size from 128 to 512, my render times were two and a half times faster. So if you have enough memory, always use 512 as the default size. So how did the iMac Pro do? It finished the render in 4 minutes and 28 seconds. The M1 Max managed to beat the iMac Pro with a render time of 2 minutes and 57 seconds. That's 51% faster than the iMac Pro. It's astonishing, really. An entry-level setup surpassed what was previously considered a high-performing workstation. The results for the M1 Ultra, though, are somewhat confusing. It finished the render in 4 minutes and 33 seconds, which is almost 50% slower than the M1 Max. That obviously is wrong, and there's something at play here. An issue with a macOS update, something going on with Redshift. I'm not exactly sure what the issue is, but when I first ran the test a few weeks ago, the results were much more predictable. Back then, the M1 Ultra was twice as fast as the M1 Max, which makes sense given that it has double the GPU cores. So, 
If we extrapolate from that initial test, the render with the 512 bucket size should finish in approximately 2 minutes. Let's now check the PC side of things. The first setup has a 3060 Ti, and the other one is a PC with two 4090 cards. That's Sean's setup. It looks like the M1 Ultra has the equivalent power of a 3060 Ti, which is not bad at all, that's a really good GPU. But when we compare things with a 4090, the M1 results look insanely slow in comparison. This is a screen recording of Sean's computer. The footage is not sped up at all, it's playing back in real time. As you can see, the two 4090s spit out the image in no time at all. And just like that, the render is done. Of course, that's an unfair comparison, we're comparing two GPUs to one, but even with one 4090 enabled, the render speed is quite incredible. What we need to keep in mind though is that the power draw of the 4090 is on a whole other level. Mac Studio in total draws just a portion of what a 4090 alone needs. And once we add two of these cards, the power consumption exceeds the power of not one, but two Mac Studios. So I definitely wouldn't expect the Mac Studio to compete with the power of Nvidia's 4090. That's the M1 though, what about the new M2 chips? Apple released the M2 Pro and M2 Max just a couple of days ago, and according to Apple's claims, the M2 Max is 30% faster than its predecessor. We don't have any solid benchmarks yet, so this is the point where we enter the wild speculation mode. If the M2 Ultra will follow M1's patterns, then the M2 Ultra should be 60% faster than its predecessor, which will bring it in the performance range of the 4090. That would be amazing. That is, if my calculations are not completely <laughs> out of whack. But even if the M2 Ultra doesn't scale that well, and we only get closer to 80 or 90% of 4090's capabilities, that's still really good. We will have a machine with great performance, but with much less power draw. In general, I like Apple's approach on power consumption. Nvidia recommends an 850 watt power supply to run a 4090 without any issues. So if the M2 Ultra manages to reach the same type of performance, but with half as much power draw, it'll be a great achievement. But yeah, for now, if you want the fastest possible rendering machine and connecting as many GPUs as possible, PC is the only way to go. A Mac cannot currently compete with Nvidia's most powerful GPU. I'm hoping that maybe next year with the M3, Apple will manage to reach this sweet spot, amazing GPU performance, but with relatively reasonable power draw. Of course, that remains to be seen, nothing's actually announced yet, we only hear rumors about the M3, and that's about it. Either way though, if you're a Mac user, the M2 lineup looks good, so the moment the M2 Ultra comes out, I'm pre-ordering whatever Mac comes with it. Okay. So, that's the GPU part, let's now check photogrammetry. I used 160 pictures to reconstruct this piece of brick. The final mesh is very detailed, and it's made out of 1.2 million polygons. Initially, I was under the impression that Apple's photogrammetry SDK was taking advantage of the neural engine cores, at least that's the impression I got out of Apple's presentations. Just as a reminder, the M1 Ultra has twice as many neural engine cores as the M1 Max does. So in theory, the M1 Ultra should be twice as fast. But unfortunately, that's not the case. The iMac Pro finished the reconstruction in 18 minutes and 45 seconds. As expected, the M1 Max completed the test much faster than that, around 60% faster than the iMac Pro, which is an amazing boost in performance. Unfortunately, the M1 Ultra is just 17 seconds faster than the M1 Max. I was really confused by the results. The M1 Ultra has twice as many CPU cores, twice as many GPU cores, and twice as many neural engine cores. So no matter the type of resource used to perform the reconstruction, we should be able to see a much better performance overall. Even if the M1 Ultra didn't scale that well, we should see something better than a 17 second improvement. My guess is that Apple's photogrammetry SDK is at fault. Initially, I thought that PhotoCatch might be the issue, but I tested out another app using Apple's SDK and the results were the same, so there's something going wrong there. So 
if you're doing a lot of photogrammetry work and you want to get a Mac, getting the maxed out Mac Studio might be a complete waste of money. I'm hoping that Apple will fix this issue and we will get to see some better speed improvements, but I'm not holding my breath. It might take months before we see a fix or maybe even longer. Weird issues aside, it looks like Apple is on its way to deliver some really amazing chips. Even if the M2 Ultra won't manage to catch up to Nvidia's offerings, I get the feeling that we're awfully close. Will the mythical new Mac Pro get us there? That's what a lot of people are expecting, but if the rumors are true, it looks like the Mac Pro will only have an M2 Ultra. Basically, it'll be a Mac Studio with expansion slots. So no fancy M2 Extreme or anything of that sort. Either way, whatever the case may be, I think we have a bright future ahead. Let's not forget that M3 is just a few months away. Supposedly, it's going to be a 3 nanometer chip, so we should expect faster performance and improved power efficiency. For now though, I'm going to keep chugging along with my iMac Pro. Once a new version of Mac Studio or Mac Pro comes out, I'll be all over it. So whenever that happens, expect an extensive review by me. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.